So welcome everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I have a treat for you because I am going to be reviewing a book by one of the greatest, most magnificent, talented, awesome writers in the history of the fantasy genre, and that is Guy Gavriel Kay. And I am going to be reviewing The Lions of al Rasan. So, I started reading Guy Gavriel Kay a long time ago, when his first trilogy came out, The Fianivar Tapestry, and I will be reviewing that down a road. Then after that, I bought his second novel, Tigana, loved it, and I've been buying his stuff ever since. I've got seven of his novels down here. The other collection is upstairs. Eventually, you'll see them all. So, I decided I was going to start to reread some of the old ones. I've only ever read his novels once each, and that's a shame. That's like, I should just be ashamed of myself for not having reread these and reread these as much as some of the other stuff that I reread and reread. Because this is magnificent art we're talking about here. This just isn't fantasy adventure. This guy, Gabriel K., writes... I mean, he is an artistic master when it comes to writing and storytelling and everything. But let's concentrate just on The Lions of al Rasan for now, because it is the one that I reread just this week. In fact, I listened to it on audible.com. Typically, when I reread things or when I read anything, I listen to them nowadays. This, this is just within the last couple of years. I listen to the books on audible.com while I follow along in the book to the words. Now I speed up the audible version to, sometimes I speed it up twice the speed, you know, so, you know, you can speed, you can have it at normal speed or you can go 125 or 150 or 175. Usually I'm at 175 or 2.0, which is double the normal speed. So it sounds like you're having the book read to you by the chipmunks, you know, cause it's really fast, but that's how fast I read. And so I don't want to I had to slow it down. I had to slow the audible down so I could actually absorb and take in the magnificent story that I was rereading in The Lions of al -Rasan. I mean, I was that captivated from the first couple pages that I was like, whoa, whoa, slow your roll. Slow your roll, Durfee. Turn the... Turn the, turn the speed on this audible down because you're missing a lot of stuff here because this guy is writing some magnificent prose and this story is freaking gangbusters and you need to slow it down and, and just soak it in. Just soak in the atmosphere of the story. Soak in the language that Guy Gabriel is putting on the page because though you might not have noticed it in your younger years, you're noticing it now as an accomplished writer yourself, you're noticing it now that this dude, Guy Gabriel Kay, is knocking it out of the park with his writing. And and you're and you gotta slow this down and pay attention because this is magnificent. This is art. You are reading art now. You are reading you are looking at the Sistine Chapel. When you read Guy Gabriel K, you are not just thumbing through a comic book full of illustrations. You are in Europe and you are witnessing, you are, you are eyewitness to greatness. <laughs> I don't know how more I can, I don't know how much more I can say about this. The Lions of al Rasan. every word that Guy Gabriel K, K writes, and, and sometimes, I gotta tell you, I am wordy in my books. I am garrulous, verbose, wordy. I vomit words onto the pages. My books are huge and long and very vivid in description. And I gotta tell you, I gotta, I gotta take lessons from this guy, Gabriel K. In fact, all of us fantasy authors need to take lessons from this guy, Gabriel K. Because he puts every bit of vividness and atmosphere into his novels in half the words that it takes me to use. And I gotta, I gotta learn how to do that. I gotta figure it out because this guy is on a level up. This guy is, I mean, all of us fantasy writers, it's like we're all in the NBA and this guy, Gabriel K, he's the Michael Jordan. 
And we're all just happy to be on the same court as, as the master, right? As the goat. Because this guy, Gabriel K., he could write better than all of us combined. And, that's, and I'm not just making this up, folks. When you're a writer and you study writing, and then when you come across somebody that just blows your mind, you sit up and take notice. And you know, before, when I was reading all these books before in my younger years, I mean, this goes back 30 years, right? I was not appreciate. I, I knew they were good stories because they're fantasy stories and they're very entertaining, very adventurous. But I was just like, rereading it now, I'm like, what? I, I was, I, I didn't even know. Back then, I had no idea what this guy was capable of. The Lions of Al-Rasan starts out First of all, it's set in medieval, a fantasy version of medieval Spain. And I'm going to pause the video right here for a second because this spot right here is bugging the shit out of me. I don't know what it is. Like I said, my set, and the production values of these videos is off the chart. But I've got something floating over here on here that's just bugging the crap out of me. And until I get rid of it, I'm not going to be able to continue on. So I'm going to turn and see what it is. It's a piece of tape. <laughs> Like I said, you get the best. Anyway, where was I? The Lions of Al Rasan. It's a fantasy version of medieval Spain. That's our setting. And man, is it gorgeously described. Is it gorgeously set up. Right from the first opening pages, we know that we are in Spain. And it's a fantasy version of Spain. And we've got three different types of peoples living in this fantasy version of Spain. In fact, it's set in the same world as the Serentine Mosaic, which, and, and a couple of other of his novels, um, which uh, now I'm going to have to reread those two. In fact, I'm going to be rereading all of these and giving each one of them a review, because I am super jazzed about Guy Gabriel K right now, just having come off of reading him the last few days. But anyway, our fantasy setting is a medieval Spain version of it, uh, and we've got three different types of people. We've got the Kindrath, which represent the kind of the Jews. We've got the Asherites, which represent sort of the Muslims, and the Jadeites, which re represent kind of the Christians. It's all an analogous. It's not, I mean, he doesn't, it's not direct representation of these religions, but you get the picture. It's, it's kind of analogous of those religions. And then our four kind of main protagonists of the story are Jehane, who is a Kindrath healer. We've got Rodrigo, a Jadeite warrior, and his foot soldier Alvar, and then last we've got Amir Ibn Kerhin, who is a poet slash assassin, one of the Asherite assassins. And man, this book, it starts out, it starts out with bloody assassinations, bloody battles, political intrigue, religious intrigue, I mean, we get it all right in the opening chapters where every character is set up just absolutely perfectly. And the political intrigues are just thrust right onto you with gorgeous, gorgeous writing on top of that, layered on top of just themes after theme after theme and characters that are developed just with a brush stroke of the pen. And we get everything we want in a fantasy novel. And I forgot, I mean, keep in mind, I read this a long, long time ago the first time. I remembered I enjoyed it. That's about all I remembered of it. I didn't remember anything else. And so rereading it was an, an, an exceptional treat because I knew I was going to like it. I just didn't remember what it was about. And I didn't think that I would all of a sudden just be falling in love with Guy Gavriel K all over again for a number of a host of other reasons. Than, I mean, it is a fantasy world, comparable this guy writes just so massively eloquently. I just can't get over what I just read. I can't get over it. I don't think you guys can. I mean, I am in awe. I am like just literally like beside myself, speechless. I'm like, what do I do now? I am an author published by Simon & Schuster, arguably one of the biggest publishers in the world. And I am nowhere near in the league of this dude. I, the guy, I am like a bench warmer on the New York Knicks and he is Michael Jordan on the Chicago Bulls and he is just killing everything. He's killing it. Just killing it. That's I just I, I I just I'm stunned. I read this book just thinking to myself what the hell do I have to offer? 
<laughs> when this guy is so great. I mean, this is, the, this is what we aspire to. This book is so well written and it's got so much action and adventure and intrigue and assassinations and wars and battles and betrayals and duels and everything that you can imagine a great fantasy would have written by like like it's it's written by angels it's touched by the gods it really is i can't recommend the lions of al rasan enough i mean guy gabriel k was one of my favorite fantasy authors previous to me reading this again and um i gotta tell you man he's lit leaped just with me rereading he's leapt up into my top five top five just top five if not um and, and he might not knock off some of the top guys that are just on my list out of um pure nostalgia right because i love them i mean he's better than all of those guys right i, I just i don't know what to say I'm, I'm dumbfounded and flabbergasted that uh i have let this guy's brilliance sort of slip by me all these years even though i've read everything he's done but now that i'm a writer and i know how tough it is to be great and i figured i had reached great i figured i had reached the pinnacle and then i and then this guy comes along with his masterpieces like the lions of all I'm like i'm like what do i do where do i go where do I start? I should just burn all this. I just burn it. It doesn't compete. It doesn't compare. I just, what, what, what's happened? What's happened to me? I gotta start all over. I gotta rethink every decision in my life. I mean, I really do. This is ridiculous. So if you want to read something, if you want to read a guy, I, I'm, like I said, I'm going to get to all these other books now and reread them because I just need to make myself feel worse about myself, I guess. I, guess, I, I, I mean, what can you say? Yeah, I'm, I, I feel, I, I've left myself depressed. I feel like I, I stepped onto the court with Michael Jordan and just got my ass kicked. Like He, got, he scored 99 points and I scored a, a free throw. Oh man, the Lions of Al Rasan. Ah, I just, I gotta take a drink. I gotta take a drink. It ain't alcohol. Ten out of ten. Lions of Al Rasan. <laughs>